There's a presumption of literacy in the room, and I'm getting cotton mouth. So I'm going to let you read this while I get a sip of water. And tell me what you'd like to talk about on this slide. Can everyone see OK? Almost every single one of these bullets is a title of at least one, if not three or four, research reports that have come out this year from a Gartner, a Forrester, an IDC, the ones that track innovation and, and marketing spend. Our conclusion is that B2B social media is the next area of innovation and betting. Um, question, comment? obvious and lucrative one to focus on next. I think we're looking at geolocation from the point of view of, of I, company, want to know where you, consumer, are. But what happens when we're producers? I, producer, want to know where other capable producers are. Um, we were recently at an event in Lake Tahoe called Taconomy. Uh, about 120 tech CEOs around the world gathered and they invited this young woman um, from Kenya who's involved in a, uh, a startup organization. And they're actually there to produce uh, information, literature, and support for local farming organizations. They have people all over the world connected through Skype and cloud computing. They operate as a, as a virtual group. Geolocation helps them to know automatically who's on tap to write what and produce what. It's a self-organized group of producers that are volunteering their time, working part-time, but because they know where in the world they are, they know who they can tap for the next resource. It's amazing. So geolocation's implications for community producing is huge. I don't think it's going to hit this year. I don't think investment, you know, I'm not going to go to Gardner Symposium and talk about that, but I think that's a longer-term innovation. Make sense? Anybody else heard about what's happening next with geolocation? I mean, obviously, there's a huge thing in, in telematics that are happening as well. Um, you know, geolocation is it's, it's applying modern technology to the oldest problem in mathematics. And uh, one of the big challenges right now, from the standpoint of someone who's been researching in this field for over 15 years and the recipient of an award in economics on the subject presented by the United States, is that very hard for a technician to talk to a programmer and get some concrete technology built that's based on sound principles of geolocation. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're, I, I don't want to get into too much detail, but I will say clearly that your analysis about the farming community is, uh, is a, indicates a highly astute observer of, of the geolocation market. I appreciate that. So I, I believe that there's a lot of smart bets that are happening. There's still some mistakes to be made. If you're interested in the next big mistakes to be made, I would refer you to Gartner.com and type in advertising hype cycle. And the concept I shared earlier with the tech trigger, the peak of hype, trough of dissolution, et cetera, uh, I, I believe, I could be missing, I believe you can see the actual just like synopsis of the report for free. And then if you really want to spend $10,000 on the rest of it, you can. But just looking at it will validate what you're seeing, I think. It's worth, it's worth looking at. So a little bit about B2B social media, and then we conclude. Does that work? Oh, in case you want to know where you stand relative to others, you'll see this in the deck when you get it. These are where people were spending their marketing budget at the end of last year. IDC's December report, it's going to come out again shortly, obviously, and you're going to see events hold, but the key is events are online and offline mixed together. PR is here, but that's defined as offline media relations. It's all a question of how you cast the categories. What's happening in public relations is PR groups are doing more of what used to be called the digital marketing, 
and marketing support and sales tools. So, yes, sir, question? In that you talk about online, offline, what percentage is online marketing, what percentage is offline marketing? Okay, so in online marketing versus offline marketing, um, I don't have the percentages memorized. It'll be in the notes section, but what I will tell you is this. Offline marketing was dropping in its expenditure in the mid 20% was dropping. Online marketing was going up uh, in single digits for the most part. Mobile marketing was going up double digits. Um, the mix is shifting dramatically, and the biggest shift coming in the next year will be the B2B companies. The online marketing to date has been largely the consumer brands. And now the B2B companies, now they're doubling down on online marketing in the coming year as well. The exact stats I I'd have to pull for you. Yeah, I'm curious to reach Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm going to get it wrong up, I guess. I apologize. Yes? You're talking about direct marketing and digital marketing, but a lot of that now is because, as you mentioned before the previous slide, because of multi channel marketing. Those things really blend. So, yes. how much of that is really direct marketing? How much is digital marketing? Are you just saying, hey, let's split the difference because they're about the same? So I encourage you to call IDC and tell them to please change their categorization. <laughs> this gives me a headache, to be honest. So yeah, the, the, real, the real finding is that word of mouth drives everything. And these categories only help if you're talking to somebody in procurement in your company. The consumer, the buyer, the B2B partner, they don't, they don't see the world this way. But it's a guide to say, this is controlled message this is controlled audience. This and this is navigating the uncontrollable and engaging in a more organic dialogue. And the organic, non controlled part is growing. The controlled broadcast is, is narrowing. That's the larger trend. So, the time that I have, what you'll see in the deck that you get is if you're putting together a B2B social media plan, it should have five pieces. Right now, most companies are in the listen and learn, the color didn't come through, but a listen and learn phase. Just go online and find out where your customers are, what they're talking about, who they're talking to, and what they're saying about your company. Our research indicates that for a B2B buyer of any size, 25% said if I read something negative about a company or its product, I will drop out of a sale and never call them again, won't even fact check with them, 25%. 50% said I'll call them, I'll check it out, and I'll use it to haggle them on price. So, monitor. And we'll talk in a second about how you prioritize that so those of you in marketing don't make your jobs unlivable. The last thing you want to do is to suddenly care about albaniancatwalkers.com and what they have to say about your product. Then you can create content and distribute content online, but the more content you create in partnership with your audience, the better. That's how you get a viral message monitor how you did, but right now most companies have just gotten to the experimenting with creating content phase. Get into where you're actually driving a debate. The most progressive companies won't get there until next summer, so you've got some time to figure this out. This is the step-by-step -step for social media. This gentleman was at an Obama rally. Just because someone is in your venue doesn't mean they're your target audience. He showed up for the sole purpose of having his bullshit protector photographed. You don't want to waste your time trying to get to the audience that's not destined for you. It's a five-step process. Figure out who you do want to get to, figure out what technologies they're using. Forest Technographics is just one of many tools you can use. Find out what they're talking about. Sysmos is just one of many tools you can use. Figure out who's talking to each other and whose voice carries weight in a conversation. Commentary, maps, there's all kinds of tools for that. And then you, as a strategist, once you've measured one through four, now you can figure out what conversation, where you want to engage in with what content. The other thing this lets you do is to figure out who are the influential people in your world and who are not. This lets you apply the 20-80 rule so you don't suddenly have 5,000 more people to track. This tells you who matters. This is something to say the old rule was I created content offline. I distributed content offline, mailing, interviews, that sort of thing. And then I started to distribute content online, but online's not a channel. Online is a way to create content, surveys, wikis, open questions to your group, co-create the content, realize that your job is to create a life cycle of dialogue. Pretend that you are a struggling publication and you want to kickstart the engine of content creation on and offline. If you have an online webinar, 
Ask yourself how you can integrate it with offline activity and vice versa. You've got to get the value out of your content. The VC outlook is there, all I will tell you is the real issue with VCs that we see, there's still too much money to be spent. There's a lot of smart money versus dumb money debate out there. The question is, what are the smart bets? This tells you where, where are we seeing the, the, the research. The question is, if you are a startup right now, associate yourself with smart money. If you are a VC, please be known for making smart bets. Dumping tons of money on dumb bets doesn't help anybody, and it's not a very good story to tell. Apologize for going fast here. Bottom line, a lot of experimentation going along. Don't expect huge economic news to come back and save the day anytime really soon. Um, if you're in B2B, you're selling to OpEx, you're selling to affordable success, you're selling to ingenuity more than innovation. Get your head around the B2B social media. Now's the time to do that. Next summer, you're going to see a real spurt of, of uh, events being placed there. And lastly, I'm going to leave you with a homework assignment that you can engage in if you'd like. All the information in this deck, like I said, you're going to get it. What do you do with it? What do you, it's my favorite SkyMall product, by the way. It's a brain massager designed to improve intelligence. If it, came in, if it came in my size, I would have one. Here's your homework. This is the new model for storytelling in our industry. It's a five-chapter model. Chapter one, how has the world changed? You've got a ton of data here. You've got your own perspective. How has the world changed for your customers and your partners? Chapter two, what new challenge does that create? And for whom? Again, research will help you. Perspective, you've got your own. Put it in there. Chapter three, now it's time for a shift in the thinking. It's not about a new widget. It's about a new shift in thinking. What is that shift in thinking? Chapter four, enter the hero, your company. You don't come in until chapter four. Chapters one, two, and three involve your audience, get them hooked. Chapters one, two, and three are the news. And then chapter five, it's not, and they lived happily ever after. That's what it used to be. Now chapter five is, how will you live? And you put that question out there, that creates content. That creates virality. So I would encourage you, go back to your organizations, go back to your partners, sit down with your customers, your employees. One or two sentences per chapter. Put them down there. See what, see what stories emerge. See what patterns you see. Chapters one, two, and three could be from the lens of technology, society, to business, personal. These are the stories that matter, they're the stories that stick, and the stories that Helen Holton is proud to pitch in conjunction with our customers. That's the conclusion of my prepared commentary. Thank you for your attention.